there everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Today we are going to get into a video that I have been wanting to make for some time, namely how to nail a difficult passage. You know what I'm talking about, in your music there might be a few bars that are really tricky. How to practice those so that you can not only play them flawlessly in your practice room but also on stage when all of those people are looking at you. And I'd just like to say, um, I hope the sound is a bit different. I don't know if you can see, but I finally invested in a proper microphone to record those videos with. So I hope the sound quality is better. I'm still figuring out how to use it. But a huge thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon for making this microphone possible. And don't forget, if you want to support Team Recorder, the link to my Patreon is down in the description below. Okay. I have broken this down into six simple steps to make sure that really tricky passage is something that you can just play without even thinking about it. Tip number one, preparation is everything. If you immediately jump in, try to play everything at a full speed, then you're only going to get frustrated and you're going to end up practicing mistakes. What I would do is play it as slow as possible, really listening to each note and making sure your fingers are moving cleanly. So, by starting off slowly, you are laying your foundations. You're allowing your ears to get used to how it should sound, allowing your fingers to get into it. Basically, you're just starting off on the right track. And later on, when you're increasing speed, my personal way of doing it is always practicing it slightly slower than I know I can. Uh, and then letting it sink in for a day, and often I come back the next day and Wow, it's sunk into my fingers and I can play it much better. Tip number two, nailing the rhythm. Before you can play it, you have to make sure that you can sing it, which means you have to know how it's actually meant to sound. So if it's a rhythmically tricky bar, take some time to go through marking where the beats are, mark in if the notes fall on the beat or between the beats. Notes that fall on the beat, I draw a circle above, and notes that fall on the half beat, I draw a cross above, and then I can immediately see, okay, that's bum, 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 bum. And then, yes, get your metronome out, put it on a slow setting, and make sure you can sing it rhythmically. By the time you actually take your instrument in your hands, the rhythm should be so ingrained into your memory that it's totally automatic and your brain can focus on your fingers. Step three, the fingers. <laughs> I'll be honest, 99% of the time when it's a difficult passage for me, it's because it's tricky finger work. And my solution is to practice not only those notes, but all around them as well. For those of you who watched my interview with Lucy Horsch a few weeks ago, she gave me a brilliant tip, which I've actually been using in my practice since, and that is to practice a difficult passage in four different rhythms. Rhythm one is swinging it. So dum da dum da dum da dum da dum. Let's take some of those notes. Rhythm two is swapping this around. So da 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 da. This is trickier. Rhythm three is long, short, 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 long, short, 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 long, short, 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 long. And then you guessed it, rhythm four is the other way around, so short, 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 long, short, 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 long, short, 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 long. <laughs> That's hard. Of course, this all gets much trickier when we have rests in there, but that is only going to be good practice. <laughs> And then whenever you're hearing those little blips in your fingers, those are some points to concentrate on. But by pulling apart the music rhythmically like this, playing the notes in different orders, in different groupings, you're really understanding the notes in a much more three-dimensional way than only playing it from start to finish. 
And the other way I like to practice um, a passage like this is repeating groups of the notes. For example, groups of three, or groups of five. Tip four, don't forget your articulation. I am very guilty of this. Often I will practice a passage very slowly with single tonguing. Da -da -da. And then later when I figure out it has to be fast and I have to do double tonguing, I have to redo all of that work to coordinate my fingers and my tongue. So my tip is, as much as possible, practice the actual articulation you're going to be using, also at a slow speed. Maybe you're making some phrasing or something special with but you have to practice it slowly. Your tongue has to work out what to do just like your fingers do. I used to make the mistake of thinking that single tonguing is for slow and double tonguing is for fast. So I would only start double tonguing when I started playing really fast. And of course, everything would just get tied up in a massive knot because I'd never given my tongue the chance to practice what it was doing at a slow tempo. Your fingers can practice slowly and your tongue deserves the same treatment. Tip five, don't forget about where you're gonna breathe. So when I was first practicing all of the fast passages of the Vivaldi Concerto, I was stopping and starting all the time and I was practicing little sections and I wasn't thinking about where I was going to breathe. Finally I could play all of those notes, but I couldn't play them all in one breath. I had completely forgotten to figure out where and how I was going to breathe. And in this context your breathing is a muscular physical thing just like your fingers and your tongue going da -ga -da -ga -da -ga -da -ga -da. so while you're practicing slowly while you have the chance to practice it in work out where you're going to breathe are you going to take time are you going to miss out a note whatever it is work it out when you're still going slow and my last tip six Try and get that difficult passage from memory. Why? Because when you're performing it on stage, you do not want to be thinking about any of the notes or rhythm you are playing. You want it to be nice and automatic so you can just play it and concentrate on making music. You don't want to be worried about, oh my God, was that a G or a G sharp? I am telling you, getting that tricky bit from memory is going to be the best thing you can do for yourself. Your fingers will have it in their muscle memory, your ear will remember how it should sound. You can just relax and let your body play it without really thinking about it. And if you're not used to playing from memory, don't worry, you can take it a couple of notes at a time. Um, or something that also works for me is practicing it just in front of the TV. So I'm forcing my brain to do two things at once. I'm forcing my fingers to just get on with their job. Because in the end, by the time you come to a performer piece, you have it pretty much from memory anyway. Even if you have the score in front of you, your fingers and your tongue know what they're doing. It's just a kind of aid in front of you. So that is how to practice a difficult passage. And then when you get on stage, this really works for me. When you get to that passage, turn your brain off. I'm serious, don't think about it. We all know what happens. You get to that difficult bit and you think, oh my God, it's here. I'm gonna make a mistake. It's a really hard bit. Oh God, please don't let me make a mistake. Everyone's gonna hear it. And then of course you play it terribly. What I try and do is just brain off, almost let my eyes glaze over. I just do my thing. Two bars later, I come back in and it was fine. So those were my six tips for nailing that tricky passage in your music. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my little face down here in the corner. If you'd like to support Team Recorder on Patreon, you can do that by clicking on my face up here in this corner. And over here, I'm giving a link to my last video on the Mozart play alongs. Now you've got all of these practicing tips. There's no reason why you can't go and play all of those notes. Thanks for watching and have a great day.